X-ray of the chest. The first step in reading an X-ray film is to hold it correctly, upright and with the letter R on your left side, as if the patient is standing facing you. Then confirm that it is well centralized and well exposed. In a well centralized film, the medial ends of both clavicles are equidistant from the spine. If they are not, then you cannot make any comment on the mediastinal shift, cardiomegaly or on comparative radiolucency of the lung fields. In a well exposed film, the spinous processes of only the first four thoracic vertebrae are seen. Others are hidden by the heart shadow. If the film is overexposed, more vertebrae are seen and the lungs appear more translucent. Now first study the lung fields in the three zones, upper, middle and lower. Upper zone is the area above the anterior end of the second rib. Lower zone is the area below the anterior end of the fourth rib. And middle zone is between the anterior ends of the second and fourth ribs. Compare the lung fields on the right and left side in the upper, middle and lower zones. The lung fields should be equally radiolucent on both sides at equivalent levels. Now study the apices very carefully, especially the area just behind the clavicles where the earliest tuberculous lesions are found. If there is a bony asymmetry, look for a cervical rib. Then inspect the cardiophrenic and costophrenic angles. They should be sharply defined. Any obliteration of any of these angles is pathological. The right diaphragm should be 0.5 to 1.5 cm higher than the left diaphragm and both should be smoothly curved. Then study the hyla represented by the shadows of the hilar vessels. The left hilum is normally at a slightly higher level than the right. Lastly, identify the course of the trachea up to the carina for any deviation. This completes the inspection of the lung fields. Now inspect the cardiac silhouette. First study the cardiac border and measure the cardiothoracic ratio for cardiac enlargement. The left cardiac border is made of aorta, pulmonary conus, left atrial appendage and the left ventricle. The right cardiac border is composed of superior vena cava and the right atrium. We will study the details later. To measure the cardiothoracic ratio, draw a vertical line through the center of the spine. Draw lines A and B perpendicular from this line to the maximum widths of the right and left heart borders. A plus B gives the maximum transverse diameter of the heart. It should be less than half of the maximum transverse diameter of the chest, that is C. That is the transverse line joining the inner borders of the ribs at the widest portion of the chest. We will study the details of the heart shadow in a later section. After studying the lung fields and the heart, inspect the bones. First the ribs for crowding, spreading and bony lesions, then the clavicles, scapula and shoulder joints. Lastly, study the soft tissues, the muscles, the subcutaneous tissues of the chest and the neck, and in females, the breasts. After studying all these minute details, it is very important to stand at a distance and look at the film as a whole. Because many times, a close and minute inspection may miss a gross change. And then, hold the film at an angle and view it slightly tangentially. Minor changes in radiolucency of the lungs are better appreciated this way. This completes the study of an X-ray of the chest. Over the years, with experience, you become so familiar with the normal structures that a change will be recognized at a glance. But a good practitioner will never call an X-ray as normal at a glance. Even the most experienced radiologist will study the film systematically and minutely before giving